Check, check, dancer. Hello, hello, and welcome to... Uh, what panel are we doing? How to prepare for a cosplay contest. Hope you're in the right place. I, I am now. <laughs> hello, my name is Tiffany, and I am the owner of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay LLC, which is a company that focuses on costume and prop fabrication, as well as education. The education part. So welcome. I first started cosplaying in 2008, <laughs> And I first started competing in cosplay competitions in 2009. And my first contest that I did was actually in Austin, Texas at IkiCon. It was like one of their very first conventions that they had. It was very scary. I was in my Sister Kate costume from an anime called Trinity Blood. And at that point, I hand stitched this entire nun costume and all of the crosses and the decorative arrows I hand sculpted out of Sculpey because they didn't really have EVA foam back then or Warbla, it wasn't really quite known. And going through the contest, it was interesting. All contests can be very interesting. And it was a funny story because going through it, there was like, three people in front of me who randomly before the contest because we were all in line for it for going on stage disappeared <laughs> and one of them had to go like to an ambulance one guy got escorted out it was a whole kind of weird situation <laughs> interesting first competition and having to explain that nope this one's not me nope i'm not that person i'm not that person i'm this person and then walk on stage I ended up for that one winning best craftsmanship and I kind of got hooked with cosplay after that and I eventually in um, 2018 quit my job as a jewelry designer for James Avery and made this a full-on company and in 2021 I got my LLC so I am a legit company and this is my full-time job making costumes and props and doing educational stuff such as YouTube all of my tutorials are on there so yeah that's kind of how I got into this I have competed a lot I've won a few best in shows a few actually a lot of best craftsmanships and a few uh, judges awards as well as I have judged a lot of competitions online and in person and I've also helped run some of the cosplay competitions. So I've got a little bit of all different angles for the cosplay competition world. And for this panel, I'm gonna try to do a generic, just go over what kind of cosplay competitions, what to expect, what to like prepare for, as well as try to go over a little bit of what this year's Anime Matsuri's cosplay contest is kind of gonna be like, hopefully. Hopefully, things may change. <laughs> Some things to know is every single cosplay competition is different. Every single convention is different. And they all have different rules. They all have different criterias for different categories. And the best thing is to look at that convention's website before going to it, just to make sure you actually want to compete at it and that your costume you wanna make actually will qualify for it. Some of the things would be that some costly competitions require you, if you're going to be doing a craftsmanship build, to build a certain amount of that costume yourself, meaning it's not a store-bought costume. But some competitions, it is okay to have a store-bought costume and are more focused on a skit where you do a performance. So it just depends on what you are more focused on. And there's no wrong way you can do either one and it's totally fine. Just make sure you are doing the right, right sign up. So you're not um, doing a craftsmanship one and you go and they're like, oh no, you're just performing. And then you have to figure out performance real quick. Those are fun. <laughs> different rules for different conventions. Specifically for this year at Anime Matsuri, there are going to be three categories. There are two that are walk-ons. One is a beginner category where it requires you to make 25% of your costume. This means that you at least, you made like the shirt part or something, um, you altered some pieces. You didn't just buy the full costume yourself. And then the second walk-on category is the advanced, and that one is required to make 75% this year. 
And then the last category is the skin. And you don't have to make your costume at all. So you can buy a store-bought one and you are only gonna be judged off of your stage performance. So just have fun. And then you don't have to stress as much if you don't wanna do the craftsmanship size. Different competitions also have different categories. So like I said, there are the, the beginner and then the advanced. But a lot of competitions have it where it's journeyman, intermediate, and masters as the head one. There's also different competitions that will, instead of doing it by your different level, they'll do it by the type of costume you are making. So is it a needlework costume, so it's heavily focused on sewing and leather work? Or is it an armor built, heavily focused on warbler, on EVA foam, huge armor builds, like World of Warcraft stuff? And then the last one, or the last two, can be FX, where it's special effects makeup kind of focus, and then larger in life. And that's typically if you have a huge, huge costume with huge wings, and it's kind of just whatever you think fits in there. Those are a little bit harder to judge just because it's more of a all over, anybody can enter it. It's just how big is your costume. Like if you're in uh, the Diva Mech, you made the full mech suit and you're on stilts, you're gonna fit in the larger in life category. And then of course you have your skits and your performance category as well as another option. Now, if you are first starting to compete, it may be a bit scary, but don't worry because some competitions have it where you can enter as a group or a duo. So you can enter with a friend and that makes it a little less stressful and a little less scary because you're with your buddy and you can go on stage with your buddy and have fun and then you can also have your friends kind of cheer you on and y'all can both help each other make your costumes. And that's a good way for first starting off too that makes it a little less intimidating. And each competition, they have different rules on that. So just look at the websites. There's also different weapon policies for cosplay competition. And this is a big one because some contests, you, they limit what type of materials you can use on your props. So some of them, you can't have metal props. Some of them I've seen, you actually can't have 3D printed props. So that's things to look out for as well as for your stage performance or your walk-on, a lot of competitions require you, if you have a sword or a prop, to swing it at half speed. I killed the person, huzzah. Uh, reason being, from experience, we've seen a lot of props break and a lot of swords break on stage. And if you're on stage higher than the audience and your sword floop, flies at full speed, you're going to hit somebody. The one I've seen before, I've seen one where it was a pyramid head and she went full force, hit down. It was so sad, the sword broke in half because of how hard she hit it. And then I've also seen competitors where they had a mace on a chain swinging it full force and the whole thing shatters. So to protect your prop, but also please protect me because I don't want to get hit by your prop. And then another thing is a lot of competitions don't allow projectiles. So if you have a dart gun or something, we don't want that coming towards us. And that is normally a no for cosplay competitions. And then we did fo er, talk about the craftsmanship versus the performance. A lot of competitions will focus heavily on craftsmanship or they were only focused on performance. In Chicago, a lot of the competitions up there are more focused on performance and less on craftsmanship. But there are some, such as the World Cosplay Summit, that focuses on both aspects, where you have to do your craftsmanship, but then you also have to do a stage performance, and you're judged on both. And for the larger competitions, you actually will have different types of judges for those different types. So sometimes you'll have judges just for the craftsmanship, and then judges just for the performance. And normally for the performance, it's people that are more on the theater side and have a little bit more knowledge where the craftsmanship is more uh, judges that have skill base for making their costumes. And then a big one that hits everybody, specifically at Anime Matsuri, is signing up for the contest before the actual convention. A lot of conventions now have it for any cosplay competition. It's like two to three months before the actual con. 
you need to sign up for the uh, cosplay contest. And you don't necessarily have to have your costume done in time. You just have to sign up and say, hey, I want to be in this. And then sometimes they might require a check-in of like, do you at least have like 75% of it made so that way you can walk on stage? Just a little check-in. Uh, there are some for smaller conventions that you can sign up at the con, but just to be aware. And that one I get hit with every year here at Anime Matsuri by people coming and being like, oh, can I sign up? And I have to say, unfortunately, no, I love your costume, but it, 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 they signed up already two months in advance. So just to be aware of that. Push up. Now, we're going to talk a little bit of this year's Anime Matsuri, because this is Anime Matsuri. And like I said, there are three categories this year. The beginner walk-on, the advanced walk-on, and then the skits. And what to expect for a walk-on? And what is a walk-on? Well, a walk-on is more focused on craftsmanship builds and walking on stage. Walk-on. And for this one, you are going to be focused on four different aspects. And again, for beginners, it's 25% of your costume being made and 75% for the advanced. And for this, the four different aspects you're gonna be judged on this year is innovation of materials. Now, this is gonna be where it's, what did you use to make your costume? How creative were you? Did you make cardboard look like metal? And I can't tell it's cardboard because that's fantastic. Are you also, I like to see a lot of times if you are handicapped, if you have a wheelchair, or if you're on a scooter, how do you incorporate that into your costume? One of my favorites for judging was, she was in a wheelchair, she had to, she unfortunately couldn't come on stage because her costume was so huge, but she was in a wheelchair dressed as Cinderella, and she actually made the Cinderella chariot thing around her, and she was able to go across in front and it was amazing. And I love seeing that incorporation into things. And it's really nice to see kind of your take, how creative can you be with stuff like that? And then also, what type, like, do you use some materials that I haven't seen before? Or for me, for my Mume costume from Kavanara of the Iron Fortress, I made a steampunk backpack, but it was made out of Warblow and the base was all pipes for a swimming pool, I had a paper plate, I had a plastic cup, and it was all covered in it. And that's more of the innovation side. How were you able to manipulate all these pieces and kind of hide it without people knowing? It's really cool to see. The second aspect you'll be judged on for the walk-ons is your character likeliness. So how close are you to your reference image? And no, we are not looking at your body type for this. We're not looking at your race or your gender, so please do not worry about that. We're just looking at, is your character wearing a red costume? And are you wearing a red costume? Are, are they similarly sewn in the same spots? Are, is your wig styled in a similar way? That's why we're looking at the character likeliness. So don't worry. And I do get asked this for contact lenses. Well, that is a cosmetic thing and that is also a medical thing, you're not judged on your eyes. So don't worry if you can't use colored contacts, do not worry about that. You won't get points marked off. I know some people get scared of that, so just don't worry. <laughs> uh, your third aspect, which is also gonna be under the craftsmanship side, is your general craftsmanship. How well is your prop and your costume made? Is it duct taped together or is it hot glued together? And I still see all of those hot glue spider webs is it sewn and do I see all of those threads still hanging down? A big one is, is your costume wrinkly? Did you iron it before you come? You came and showed me your costume? Whether you store bought it or not, your hotel room has an iron or just get a steamer, just get out those wrinkles. It looks so much better and it can definitely rise you up in scores. And then I'm also, for a general craftsmanship, going to be looking at your seams. If you're using EVA foam, are your seams hidden or is it very rough? Can I still see the glue in between parts? For 3D printed parts, have you sanded all of those stair steps so I don't see that printed lines? That's a big one for 3D printers. So just be aware. 
And then your last, the fourth aspect that should be judged on for walk-ons is your performance and your walk-on stage. Now when I say performance for walk-ons, it's not an actual like, yay, I'm doing a full dance and performance. It's you're gonna come on stage and you're typically gonna have three X's where you'll walk, you'll strike your pose, and then for Anime Matsuri, there is a runway and you are going to walk down the runway and we're gonna strike your pose and you can do it in performance. I wanna see you walking in character. I wanna see you strutting. If you're, if you're a shy character, just fake it till you make it. But um, I wanna see you actually portray that and hopefully the audience will also see that and they'll also be cheering for you because that's the best thing. If you've got your weapon and you're like, epic pose and everybody's like, yeah! Or explosion! I want to see that on stage. I want to see it come to life. So that's where we say kind of performance. For new people, it is very scary. I know. Just try to come on stage and hit your three X's at least. Don't just come on and run off because I, I can't see your costume then. I'm going to judge you. I got to look at my paper and if you've already run off stage by the time I look off or like up, I, I can't judge you. So just take your time. <laughs> Now, there is the other category of skits, and you are gonna be judged on three different categories. And a reminder here for Anime Matsuri skits, you only have to make 0% of your costume. So you can be a store-bought one. And I do also recommend, even if it's store-bought, iron it, steam it before you come on stage. It looks so much better. And for these, the first one we're gonna focus on is storyline, and you are only gonna be judged off of your performance on stage. So, is your storyline clear? Is it organized? Can I actually tell that you're not just standing here? Like, I don't know what your story is. Can you, can you put on a performance, you know? Um, if you're gonna rock out with an air guitar, I wanna see you actually move around the stage. I wanna see you be energetic. So that kind of storyline, performance, everything. The second one is going to be character representation. So, do you look like a character? If you're Megamine on stage, do you look like Megamine, or do you just look like you're wearing a red dress and that's it, kind of thing. I want to kind of see you look a little bit like the character. And then the third one for skits is going to be your audience engagement. I want to see you having fun, and it makes me want to have fun and cheer for you. So how is the audience reacting to your performance? Are they, boo, because you're an evil guy, you're the Joker coming on and you're like, he, 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 he. I can't do a creepy voice, I've got a squeaky little voice, so just pretend that was evil. Those are awesome. If the character, like, if the audience is scared of you, that's a good thing if your character is supposed to be that way. If you're an epic knight coming on stage, yes, I want everyone to be like, yeah, I want to I wanna have that engagement. So that's going to be the three for your skits. Now, some things to know is for most cosplay competitions, there's pre-judging. And I will say, for Anime Matsuri, skits, you do not have to be pre-judged because you're only being judged on stage. But for all of the walk-ons, you will have what's called pre-judging. And most good ran cosplay competitions that are judging craftsmanship will have pre-judging. And pre-judging is something that happens before the actual on-stage competition. And this is what the judges are gonna be actually going up to you and you're gonna have one to three minutes for you to tell the judges how you made your costume. So this is where you're going to have the time to tell them which parts you bought, which parts you altered, and which parts you made yourself. And I also wanna know at this part, did you pattern your piece yourself? So did you drape your fabric over a dress form or did you wrap yourself in saran wrap and masking tape? and make your patterns that way? Or did you buy it from another cosplayer, which is okay, or did you get it from Joann's? I kind of want to know those things. This is also the same for 3D CAD models. Did you CAD the piece yourself in Blender or in Rhino or any other program, or did you buy it? Did you print the piece yourself? I want to know that. And then other stuff. I want to know what you're most proud of for your, your costume. That 
is one of the things for if you're really shy a lot of times they'll ask you that because I love seeing your face light up because you're like oh I, I want to tell you how I made my staff because I can see the passion then of how you made it and you'll talk to me how did you make it out of foam did you make it out of warbler and things like that and then if there's any materials that you use for the first time tell the judges that also because then it's really cool to see how is your skill level how did how did you learn was there any tough materials that you hadn't used before and you learned so much from this one tell the judges that or if there's any tools that you are learning for the first time you just got a cricket machine and you're learning how to cut all of your your vinyl iron-ons with the cricket i want to know that so those are kind of the things that the judges want to hear from you also to be aware judges want to flip your seams and they will always ask beforehand if you have your consent and what this means is i want to look on the underside what are the stitches underneath i want to see okay so there's no threads loose threads there i want to see most of the time you're only going to see the top of the hat if you look on the inside there's actually velcro because i had to fly with this hat so it comes part of two pieces it's also eva foam on the foam or on the inside so i want to see that how well are your pieces 360. also if you have any undergarments that you made if you are in a traditional renaissance outfit and you made the petticoat you made the corset i want to know that especially if you made a corset cause i, I kind of love corsets this to show me because obviously if you're wearing a corset you're most likely it's underneath and i won't be able to see it so the best way to show this to me is with a build book now build books can be a scary thing because a lot of people are like i don't know what a build book is this is intimidating i don't know I got an example to show you that Jesse will pass around. Please. Thank you, thank you. And a build book for anime Matsuri is not required, obviously, for skits, and is not required for the beginner category, but it is required for the advanced category. And what a build book is, is to show me how you made your costume. So for a build book, please don't write tons of essays. You got one to three minutes to show me this and i'm dyslexic i can't read to save my life i'm not reading your thing i want to look at these fancy pictures and i'll also note so my example is in black and white make yours in color i just don't have a color printer at home so just go out to kinko's or office max someplace like that and get it printed but uh, this is just a panel so sorry it's not in color <laughs> but um what to put in your build book so on the first page you're gonna want your name because I'm gonna have a stack of build books and if your name's not on it, I probably won't know who your entry is. So make sure to at least have that. Also, I always recommend to put what category you are entering into. So if you are a beginner, if you are a master, I wanna know that, or if it's like needlework, armor, whatever type of category, put that in your build book so that way I can easily be like, oh, you're this category. And then I'm not trying to compare you against another category especially if you don't put beginner on your book and I think you're an advanced you're gonna be judged off of that so you don't want me to mix it up because I can tell you when you've had to go through 300 build books online it is very exhausting and I'm not gonna read much at that point I'm gonna look mostly at pictures so just to be aware and then the other big thing to add to your build book is the name of the character that you're actually cosplaying so if you're Megumin from Konosuba, I want to know that. If you're Naruto, still put that, because chances are most of the judges will know who that is, but after 300 build books, I might be a little brain fried and I might not remember who this character is. So have that name and then also have a reference image of that character. So in the build book, I made this as an example for I helped run the blizzard's hearthstone or was it hearthstone it was the death knight cosplay crown competition this last december and i was on the administration team so i made this build book as an example for people and this one was my uh, radiant Ar Lightbringer armor set from world of warcraft and you have a reference image of the character and then you have an actual full body image of me in the costume so i can kind of get a comparison so try to at least finish your costume a week or two before the actual convention so you can at least get a basic picture so I can see it. 
Then also for the build book, I like to personally put them in different like sections. One page I have as the bodysuit, one page I have over the sword, and then over the armor to kind of focus on that. So that way I'm not kind of all over the place. And with your build book, you typically want these to be anywhere between 10 to 15 pages, no longer, because again, I don't have a lot of time to look at your build book. I want to see everything, but I can only spend so much time looking at it. <laughs> and for build books, you want to put how you made it. So work in progress images of you making from start to finish, like the staff. So for this, I would do images of the CPVC pipe, bending it into the shape I wanted. And it actually comes apart in three pieces because I flew here. So I want to see that you actually put those pieces together. And then seeing the process of me cutting the pieces of foam and gluing them and then carving them and the paint process, just, it doesn't have to be a lot, just some here and there. So I can see, one, you actually made your piece because if you're in the advanced category and you have to make 75% of your costume, I can at least see proof that you made it and you didn't buy it from somebody. So it kind of actually legitimizes your costume and your craft then for the judges. But yeah, adding that in fabric pieces, if you did a corset, like I said, showing those pictures of you making that part so I can easily be like, oh, okay, so that's under this part or your petticoat. And it can help for that. Uh, a big one. If you did fabric manipulation, if you hand dyed your fabric, let the judges know that, because that tends to be a lot more points. Same with like if you hand cut out something versus if you used a Cricut instead. I want to know you spent that extra time doing that long, tedious process. And then for making your build book, you can do it, I do mine in Adobe Photoshop. You can do Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have Adobe, you can do Microsoft Word. PowerPoint, Paint, or Publisher, anything. And you are not judged off of your, your build book, like the quality. So don't, don't try to do fancy fonts. Don't try to do fancy pictures here and there that aren't actually with your costume. It's just for reference so I can see it. Just the bare minimum, have pictures in it, have your names and everything, and you're good to go. So don't stress out too much about it. And that is our build book. I have one more we can put on this side. So one thing in the cosplay community, there is a term. It is called sandbagging. And sandbagging is when, let's say, I went to a convention and I entered the cosplay competition and I won best in show for my magazine. But then I wanted to go to another convention and enter that same exact costume, that one, into another competition, trying to win again. This is called sandbagging. And it is frowned upon in the cosplay uh, community. Mainly being, well, let's let somebody else try to win. Make another costume instead. Don't do this. It is really frowned upon and a lot of competitions actually have rules against this where if it is a rule and you try to enter a costume that has won, I'm gonna let you know that the judges in the administration side do a lot of digging on social media to see if your costume has actually won and a lot of competitions, if you have one, will disqualify you. You won't be able to compete, you won't be able to walk on stage or be shown. Some conventions will also ban you from ever competing at that convention. So just be aware. There are some conventions though that do allow it, but just, just don't, don't sandbag. Just let's try to be positive and let's promote everybody having fun and everybody trying to win. And instead of trying to get multiple awards for that one costume, make a new one and win an award for that next costume so you can have multiple for different outfits. Okay, so we're gonna talk about performance now and I'm gonna look at time real quick. Oh good, we're doing, we're doing well. So we talked a little bit about walk-ons and walk-ons are gonna be when you walk on stage and you hit those X's. Now, for walking on, don't just walk on Find my ex, pose, walk to my next ex, don't do that. Walk to your piece in character to each of your spots. Cause you're not being judged on each pose, you're being judged on your whole time on the stage. So the moment you walk on that stage, be in character. 
the moment you walk off stage, still be in character. Give that last little, yeah, right as you walk. And if the judges are down somewhere, make eye contact with those judges. Like, hey, I see you. And that actually, like, a lot of judges really like that. So do that. I'll also note that for each pose, don't hit your pose. Go to the next one, hit your pose. You want to go to your pose, stand there for a good two to three seconds. Let the audience be like, yeah! And give that time. The stage is yours. Take your time to each spot. Don't run off stage. Just don't, don't do that. Some advice would be, if you're going to be doing a walk-on, practice your poses in the mirror before you go on stage. Have three poses in your head already in mind that you're going to go do this pose first. And you look in the mirror and you can be like, okay, no, I need to angle my body this way a little bit. Make that gut go in a little bit more. Look a little bit taller. Whatever you want to do. But kind of have that already in mind so that way you're not nervous on stage as much. And then also a helpful tip, especially for Anime Mitsuri, is it is a runway in the center. Please know where the end of the stage is. Please. We have had close run-ons of some people, especially if you're uh, wearing a mask, please be aware of where the end is. And then also, the stage is quite a bit uh, sorry, quite a bit taller than where the audience level is. So don't walk looking down at the audience like this. You want to walk. So if you make an L, here and here, with confidence, walk up. The stage performance. So that's more of at least I learned that from doing color guard, winter guard, and marching band. Yeah, a bad nerd. So doing that, you're performing to not just the audience here, but the audience that is higher. Anime Mitsuri has the bleachers on the sides, so there's going to be some people that are as tall as the roof. So you want to see to everybody. You want to project that. Project your confidence to everybody, because it's going to fill the room then and give a lot better scores for your performance. So those are kind of my main advice for walk-ons. Now, if you are doing a skit, a skit is where you're going to be doing an actual performance on stage. It might be a lip syncing. And if you're doing a lip syncing, please practice to your music beforehand. Don't go on stage, well, well, I don't know the words. Practice it a little bit before you go on stage. So at least you can kind of fake it a little that your, your voice is going along with the words. And then, don't just stand in one place the whole time. Move back and forth on stage. I want to see you take up the whole stage, whether it's just you or if you have an entire group. I want to see everybody interacting, moving around. Again, if you're air guitaring, don't just air guitar in one spot, jumping up and down. I want to see you at least air guitar. Over here, jump up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here, jump, jump, jump. Whatever, I don't care. I want to see you actually like moving stage performance everywhere. And then also for your stage performance, even if you're going to sit like you're starting in a pose in the center, you're walking on stage and you're going to start in one spot, walk on stage in confidence, walk in your character. So that way, because you're, you're being judged that whole time that you're on stage, not just when we say go and do your performance. And then the last one for skits would be when your skit ends and the music stops, don't just, okay, walk off stage. Stay in your pose for two to three seconds. Take in that applause from the audience. You, you're on that stage for that long. Just do a few more seconds. Hell, like, hit that pose at the end. And that will definitely help a lot. And it adds the confidence. So my final advice that I could give for if you're going to be doing, uh, entering a cosplay competition, and if you're nervous and everything, before the actual contest, please make sure to eat a snack and drink some water. Use the restroom. Those are like the biggest things because we do not want to see you pass out on stage. If you can, bring a fan or a piece of paper. A lot of times behind stage and wherever the contest is for the stage, they tend to either be stupid cold or stupid hot. And in Texas, they're most likely stupid hot. So don't pass out, especially if you're, in, if you're in a full leather outfit, if you've got tons of armor on, 
have a fan ready. You can also have a handler in some cases if your costume is so large. So just be aware you can have somebody help you and have some water. Have, have your little handler like my sister here who brings the water for me and helps with the crowd control when I get to go somewhere and I'm like, I can't do pictures anymore, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, it helps. And then some of the other stuff that I would recommend would be when you're behind stage waiting to go on, talk with the other contestants. You can make a lot of really good friends, long friends for life, with other creative people. If you're a craftsmanship person and you see somebody else in another costume, go talk to them. How did you make this? Make conversation. Make a TikTok video, just as long as there's no sound on behind stage. And have fun. And then remember, everybody is just as nervous as you behind stage. It's not just you. So just try to, try to fake it. Try to relax a little bit. If you need that time, if you're really anxious and you suffer from like anxiety it's okay to go take your break inside isolate yourself a little bit and then come back i mean sometimes i have to do that too so it's okay but just eat don't pass out and remember to have fun because com cosplay competition should be fun and hopefully not stressful so i hope i hope this helped a little bit <laughs> So it can be still with fabric, so your fabric choice, did you choose like a cheap cotton or did you work with a velvet satin, what is the type of material that you use, did you do fabric manipulation. So my costume I wore yesterday was Milo from Genshin Impact and everything, all of the fabric peaches were actually airbrush painted on. So all of the colors, I did a Cricut stencil with a sticker paper and then I put it on and did all of my paint with that. So that's kind of where I'd be looking at things like that. I'm typically working on three different costumes at once. I'm also filming everything and making my patterns. It's, for a lot of times, social media, the way for me to sell my, my prints and my stuff of how I, I make things. I have to constantly be doing social media, so I have to always be working, unfortunately. When I first started cosplaying, I was in high school in 2008. So that, like working on my costumes, my Trinity Blood one, I actually worked on that for a year. Just after school, after band practice and everything, I'd go home and just stitch a little bit as I hand sewed that whole thing. And it doesn't matter how long you take to make your costume, you can take three or five years. Now, if you did that, I, I want to kind of know why did you do that? Like, uh, okay. <laughs> it, it just depends. Like, it's fine. For when I was working with James Avery, I actually made my Ariel costume from Diablo, which it's the blue wings angel. It went viral. It actually was here in Missouri when it did. And that one, it took me two and a half months. And it was just a side project I was doing for fun. So it just depends on your actual, like, speed. Don't stress, social media can be really stressful for, you feel like you're obligated to post something every day or to, to work on stuff every day. If you're not feeling it, don't work on your costume because most likely if you're having a bad day, your costume is gonna have a bad day that day too. Your quality is not gonna be as good. So that's, that's my thing. I would not use the same one, but it just depends on the competition. Depending on your skill level, even if you won the beginner one, you sometimes can still stay in that category. You don't have to go up to like the masters or advanced right away. Some competitions will have rules where to go to another level, you have to have won at least like five major awards. So a best in show, a best craftsmanship. It's not always you won one award, so now you're always in this one. So don't, don't worry about that. In general, at least for me for judging, I'll never tell you you did something wrong unless you want actual critique. And I'll never do it in a judging room. It'll be after the competition, not beforehand. If you want honest feedback, like how can I improve this? I'll be like, oh, you could try using this. I'm never gonna tell you, oh, that, that's, it's terrible. You did an awful job. That's awful if somebody says that to you. And they should never do that. Cosplay, to me, you should always be encouraging especially as a judge because there are so many people that come through it's their first time they're nervous and i do know that you can get a judge that totally ruins something and makes you never want to cosplay again and i never want you to feel that way i've had some actually at twitchcon i've had where i competed in my atlantic mercy and i've had some judges who 
looked at it, and then just went and stood in the corner for the, the rest of the five minutes of the judging time. It was like, okay, um, do you hate it? Do you, are you, like, what, what's the deal? So I don't want anybody to ever feel that way. So if you did, I'm sorry for that and apologize on their behalf. But if you ever want to critique, even if you're not competing, you can always come and ask me at my booth. I do live crafting streams on YouTube as well. If you want to come and like ask, like, hey, I need some advice on that. I also have an open Discord where we have a pretty nice cosplay community there. And you can throw your work in progress images up there, your final um, costumes, and get advice from the community as well as I try to chime in when I can. <laughs> so, yeah. It will depend on what you did with that material. So my Nilo one, all of the fabric that I painted was just basic cotton, cotton polyester, like cheap stuff. I, I work on a budget too. Like this is still my full-time job, but I, I budget cosplay and I try, the most expensive stuff I do are probably my shoes for the characters because I want comfortable shoes and stuff that works. So yeah, but just, it's the fabric manipulation. How can you fool me into thinking it's expensive? Where there are gonna be some judges, it does depend, all judges are different. Some judges are more biased on one thing, but some judges may be a little snooty on that, so just be aware. Um, for If you're ever gonna enter a cosmic competition, a lot of conventions will announce who the judges are. Anime Missouri does not, so. But uh, typically, what I would do if I'm going to enter a contest is I'm going to look to see who are the judges. Are, are they focused on needlework? Are they focused on armor? Because if there is no armor cosplay judges and you're entering an armor character, they're not really going to have any knowledge on that, most likely. Same if it's only stream, stream I can't say the word, um, sewing people, then they may not have as much knowledge for the other type. Or there's also, and there's nothing wrong with being a cosplay model if you buy your costume and you put on and take pictures, but some competitions, the judges are only people that do that and have no actual knowledge in craftsmanship and building costumes. So that's something to be aware of when looking, if you want to compete at a uh, competition, is do the judges know anything? I know I've um, I'm judged with voice actors before for cosplay competitions, to give you an idea. And they're, they're awesome voice actors, but they, they may not know anything about costumes. They might just be a judge because they're a voice actor to a famous anime. And you know, it, it's just something you'll have to look to decide if you want to do that com uh, competition or not. So uh, I entered, I don't remember the competition. Combat Medic Ziegler Mercy from Overwatch has wings, I call it my dragonfly costume, and it, they were really heavy, it was, I was learning to 3D print, and each wing had like 28 individual printed pieces that were male and female that connected with plexiglass and some LED lights, and they also opened and closed, and they were all cool, and the threads actually, um, they were too heavy, and the threads ripped out when I walked on stage, literally like, I stepped up, uh, the wing came off, and my husband at the time, he took the wings off and was just like, take them off, take them off, and I came up and was like, hello, here's my pose, here's my pose, I walked to the center, and next thing I know, he ran behind me with the wings, and he actually was like, the wings in his hand. <laughs> I still won best craftsmanship for that, because for the pre-judging, I got to show them everything, I showed them how I made the moving wings and all of that. I do think it, it hurt me in the end because obviously my costume broke and the judges had to talk to me after, afterwards like, oh, what happened? Like, what? what, what why, why did this happen? But um, it does happen. It depends on the judges, really. It will make your stage performance score a lot lower because it broke, unless you are planning to go out and break it. I would say if something breaks, pretend that it was supposed to happen. It, this was meant to be this way, and yeah, um, that, that's the best way I can do. So, again, it's different competitions, different conventions, different rules. The larger conventions, you're going to have a lot wider of a, a skill range. 
So you can enter in a lower one, where for smaller conventions, a lot of times you're not going to have as many competitors, and you're more likely going to be at a higher skill level for those. So you can kind of argue back and forth with that. But in reality, it's up to you to decide which, which one you're in, and the judges may pop you up or bump you up to another category. But in general, when they do this, they only do it when they think you deserve to win. I, you can talk to them in advance. You can send them a photo of your costume if they have pre-registration and be like, here's my costume. I think I'm this level. I wanted to make sure with you. And then they, they might decide, oh, well, we're going to actually put you in this category instead before the show. I would recommend that. And hopefully they'll be nicer to you. I'm sorry you had a bad experience with that. So for competitions, you always have to give credit. If a judge finds out that you didn't make a piece, then you can get disqualified for that. For that 60%, if, let's say, I made my hat, I made this whole outfit, but I didn't make my staff, I didn't make it, but let's say I didn't for the sake of this, then tell the judges that, and at least in my mind, that is no longer a part of your costume. It is a void in my head, and I'm going to judge you off of this part. So if you, let's say, commission somebody to make that, I'm not going to look at it. Like, uh, it's cool, but I'm not going to judge you on that piece. And that will go into your, if you have to make 75% of the costume, this is my 25% I didn't make. But yeah, if you, same with patterns and blueprints, give credit that you got it from a cosplayer, but you still made it in the end. If you followed a tutorial, that's okay, but I still want to know that you, you had help. Because the reason for patterning giving um, credit to those cosplayers is, well, one, I sell tons and tons of patterns. I'm very aware whose pattern and who's, like, if you have an Aritel, I most likely know which cosplayer you got that Aritel pattern from. And so if you don't tell me, then I'm like, okay, well, what else are you not telling me? Kind of thing. And it makes me question of, like, how much did you actually make then? So just be honest, and that's... Yeah, but that is it. We are out of time, so thank you so much for coming to my panel. I hope you have an amazing anime Mitsuri, and if you have any final questions, you can come up here, or you can talk to me at my booth tomorrow in my Gundam costume. So yes, thank you.